Hello and welcome back to another Router Gods video. My name's Humphrey and yesterday I did a video about was it worth it becoming a sales engineer? I was a network engineer before and then I moved into pre-sales. Got a lot of good comments about that video. It seems to struck a nerve with a lot of folks out there. Uh, you know, many years ago when I was a network engineer, well, five and a half years ago when I was a network engineer, I'd always wondered, like, there's got to be a better way. Like, I don't want to be doing this for another 10 years or 20 years. Uh, got to be a better way of making money. Got to be a better lifestyle. How do I get away from being on call? And becoming a sales engineer was definitely the ticket. So I've decided to make a series of videos about becoming a sales engineer. Uh, this will be for free. There's no ads. There's no charge for it. And the reason I'm doing that is because there are some places out there that is charging for this type of advice, which um, I think is unfortunate, right? Should be should be free. All right, so let's get into the quality. So you've maybe you've decided to, hey, maybe I want to become a sales engineer, pre-sales engineer. What kind of qualities are they looking for? Are there things that I can do better? You know, are there qualities that I should maybe strive to improve, right? So in no particular order, except maybe for the last one, we'll, we'll start from the top. We'll talk about personality. We'll talk about grit and, you know, being curious. And then we'll end up with the, you know, I have to, have to be good enough technically and skilled enough. Like you, you have to know how a router works and how a switch works and you have to know command line. But, you know, we'll, you know, we'll get to, do you actually need to have a CCIE? So before I joined Cisco Megacorp, uh, my thought pattern was, well, if, if you want to get hired as a sales engineer, you got to have a CCIE, and that absolutely is not true. Definitely not true. So we'll get to that towards the end. Okay, let's start with the first quality, personable. People have to like you, and you have to like people. It kind of goes both ways. I, I guess if you don't like people, then it's going to be very hard for people to like you unless you're a chameleon and you fake it, but um, that only gets you so far. So you have to be interested in people. You have to be able to hold a conversation. You have to be able to get along with difficult people. Now, you don't necessarily have to be buddy-buddy with, with uh, you know, a, a difficult person, but you at least have to be personable, you know, likable, right? Um, being able to, you know, take people out to lunch and dinners and, you know, have coffee meetings and stuff like that. And, you know, if... If you've been working as a network engineer for a long time, this this may be the hardest thing, the most difficult thing to improve, to foster. Because as a network engineer, you're dealing with facts, you're dealing with your know, configuration, and uh, I mean, generally, it is a type of situation where your coworkers are also not that personable, right? So so you got to be personable. You don't have to be an extrovert. You don't have to be the guy that walks around the party and, hey, I'm going to introduce you to this person or that person, just kind of like floating around like a diplomat. You don't need to be that extent. Those are what account managers are for. Those are what, you know, so, so there's another group of people that you will be paired up with. They can be the extroverts. They can be the crazy, like, ah, you know, dancing on top of tables and stuff like that. Right? You just have to be a likable guy. And a good test for this, I always use this when evaluating people, when I'm interviewing them, do they pass what I call the elevator test? And what the elevator test is, is when you're talking to a person after a couple minutes, imagine yourself being stuck in an elevator with them. The, the doors have closed, the doors won't open, you're stuck, right? It's not going anywhere, it's not going up and down. You're stuck for five minutes. Can you get along with this person for five minutes? Or will you strangle the person to death after two minutes, right? Do they talk too much? Are they only talking about themselves? That type of stuff. So personable, probably the most important trait out there. You got to like people. Uh, actually, to further expound on that, um, a lot of people are saying, a lot of people think this is the whole introvert versus extrovert thing. And um, to, to let you know, I... I'm kind of right in the middle, right? I have days where I want to be outside. I want to be at Starbucks, you know, walking around. I have other days where I just want to be playing Stellaris or World of Warcraft back in the days, right? So, and, and chess.com, right? So I, 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 can, I can straddle both. 
Um, so I'm kind of right in the middle. So that's, yeah. And it took a lot of practice to do that. Uh, if you were to ask me five to ten years ago, was I an introvert or extrovert? I was definitely an introvert, like full bore, geek, introvert, right? But after doing this for a little bit, I think I've, I've moved the needle towards the middle. I'm still not the guy to dance on top of the table uh, type of thing unless you get me a lot of alcohol. But, you know, right down the middle. Okay, let's go into the second trait, which is you have to be adaptable. This job will throw anything and everything at you. So every day is different. Uh, you could be winning a deal and then suddenly be on the losing end. You could be on the losing end and suddenly it turns winning. So you have to be adaptable. Things can change at a whim. Uh, another thing that happens quite often. So you start the day off and your schedule looks like this, right? You got a WebEx from here to here. You got a Zoom on here to here. You're meeting a customer here to here. Someone cancels and everything gets flipped all around. You got to act really quick. Send the emails out, shoot out the messages, go on WhatsApp. Hey, we'll be late. You know, you could be driving to a customer and a big rig overturns in front of you. Now the freeway is closed. Okay, change your plans. You got to be adaptable. Do you pull off the side road, take the WebEx? Do you send a message saying you'll be late? So you got to be basically take the punches and change it up a bit, right? And this is going to be a very, very important trait. If you're not flexible, if you can't take change, if you can't take ambiguity, this is not the job for you. If you want lots of rules, this is not a job for you. A lot of this is flying by the seat of your pants, right? Um, yeah, you're going to be, a lot of times, you're in uncharted territory. You could be meeting a customer for the first time. What the, you know, you've never been to their office. You know, how do you, how do you get there? So adaptability is definitely a huge part of this job. Okay, being tenacious, having grit, what does this mean? So basically, you don't give up, right? So you're going to be throwing a lot of things at you. You're not going to win every deal. And of course, everyone acts all great when you win a deal. High fives all around. Life is great, right? You go out celebrating, have a couple drinks, eat a nice steak dinner, take your wife or girlfriend or mistress out to the, the movies, buy her a gift. You know, everything is great when you win. Uh, but you will be thrown losses. You'll, be, you'll have wins turn into losses. You'll have situations where it's a no-win situation, right? So you, you thought you had a fair chance, but no, the, the winner was already picked like three months ago. So you're going to run into losses. You're going to run into unfair situations. You're going to run into situations where the deck is stacked against you, and you still have to go forward. Um, it's, it's very easy for a normal person when faced with those circumstances to kind of take your ball and take your toys and, and go home, but you can't do that as a, as a sales engineer. You always have to push forward, right? So being tenacious, having grit, how, how fast can you bounce back? That's going to be a big part. Mental toughness is a big thing as well. Uh, you're going to run into customers that are difficult, right? And you're going to be thinking during the meeting, like, man, they're just, they're punks, right? And you just, you can't take it personally. Maybe they had a bad day. Maybe it's their upbringing. Maybe it's the culture. This culture sometimes does happen. So you just have to be able to deal with it and, and still be able to, to smile. So tenacity and grit, that's a, that's a big one. Curiosity. So you have to show curiosity about your customer's business, what they do, about their, their you know, social lives and their backgrounds and stuff like that. You got to be curious. And that's, I, I think I bring a decent amount of that to the table. I, I'm a geek. I want to find out how things work. Like, how do you do this? Like, oh man, you guys, you guys sell coffee. How do, how do you do that? Uh, where, where's the coffee grown? Where, where is it roasted? You know, how do you manage your different stores? I'm always interested in that. Oh, you have, you have tens of thousands of stores. How do you do this? Right? Uh, how how have you done it in the past? You know what's what? How are things been in, in the last six months in regards to COVID? So being being curious is is a huge thing. And once a once those customers find out and realize that you are genuinely curious, you're not just just there to uh, sell them something. Then you will find that they open up and uh, the interactions become much better, right? Because uh, I'll tell you. 
the the typical reaction when a sales engineer comes on site when a sales team comes on site is generally very like okay he's here to sell us some boxes how much do we tell him uh, but after a couple meetings and you show you know, your first bowl, your adapt, you know, et cetera, you show all these qualities, uh, it's, it's going to be sometimes a slow grind. Uh, I've seen this before where it's taken 10 meetings before everything, okay, well, he keeps coming and, you know, we like him and, okay, let's, let's get down to business. Or it could be fast. Like there's definitely been times where the meeting started off hostile. I do my demo, I do things, and then at the end of the meeting, uh, we, you know, we finished the meeting and then people in the background are messaging me is like, that guy really, you know, you, he really likes you. you. You turned it around. So it's like uh, sometimes it, it can take a while, but other times it's, it's kind of cool that in, in 15 minutes you can, win, we, you can win them over. So being curious is a big part of that. Now you notice that the last part I put is technically capable. And the reason I put it last is... Well, it is kind of last. It is understood that you will have enough skill to know how to do the basics, right? You, you got to know like how to wireless work, how to switches work, you know, SD WAN, BGP. It's just taken for granted that you will be able to have a decent conversation about the technical aspects. Now, do you need to be a CCIE? No, absolutely not. You don't need to be a CCIE. You don't need to have all the top certs to be a sales engineer. In fact, I would argue that after a certain point, if you're too technically capable and if you're lacking these other qualities, then that could be a definite detriment to that. So I don't want someone, I don't want to be working with someone who's extremely, extremely technically capable, but I can't get along with them. And no customer is going to want that either. They don't want to be talking with the smart ass who always one-ups them, uh, a, a person who has uh, three CCIEs, but you just want to strangle them after two minutes in the elevator because they just always have to be right and stuff like that. So uh, you have to be technically capable enough, right? And usually, just as a general rule, it doesn't have to be this way, if you are at a CCNP level, you will be okay here. You're at a CCNP level and you can explain complicated concepts to normal people. That's another thing you'll run into. You'll get into a meeting where there's three people. One person's a network engineer. Hey, that's great. You're a network engineer before you can talk, right? Then you have a middle guy. The middle guy could be the CIO. Now that middle guy, if you start talking BGP hold timers and OSPF virtual links to the CIO, He'll just tune you out, right? So you got to change things up a bit. And then to the right of the CIO might be the marketing person. Now you got definitely have to change it up for the marketing person, right? So yes, you could be talking about SD-WAN, having the two links. But the way you talk about SD-WAN to the network engineer is a lot different than the way you talk to it with the CIO. You might talk about budget. Hey, if you have two internet links, it's going to be a lot cheaper than your MPLS link and uh, dark fiber link. CIO will go, okay, that's cool, right? Now to the marketing guy, I don't know how you would explain sd wan to the marketing guy, but you're going to have to change it up. You can't talk about um, BGP and stuff like that to the marketing person, right? So technically capable. CCNP level should be just fine here. And once you get into these larger organizations, there's going to be tons of internal training for you. There's going to be paid exams you might get several free shots at the CCIE lab. There's probably going to be bonuses if you pass exams. So all of that, you know, if you want to stay geeky after you get hired, you definitely, definitely can do that. And of course, you have to learn the product, right? So you have to learn how to demo the product. You have to know how to POC it. POC is a, a proof of concept. And the proof of concept is you know, you're installing it at the customer's site, helping them go through the typical settings and stuff like that. So... These are the qualities, the, the top five that I could think of right off the bat before I go to, to dinner here in Singapore. Good qualities or qualities of a good sales engineer. And I think for my next, my next video, I'm going to talk about uh, you know, what, what makes a bad sales engineer. I, I know I've touched about it 
uh, quite a bit. But uh, if you have any ideas, if you have any questions, of course, feel free to put them in the comments below in the YouTube uh, comments and the YouTube questions, and I will definitely get to them, or I will make a separate video about them. All right, I hope you're doing safe and well wherever you are, and I will see you on the next video. Thanks. Bye.